Hey, welcome to the Crashing with Friends podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 137? Six. 1,367 is what I said. 136. Yeah. 136. <laughs> All right, let's redo that. <laughs> redo that bullshit. <laughs> All right. Hello. Welcome to Crashing with Friends podcast. I'm out here in the... Let's redo that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Jackson Brayman. Welcome to Crash with Friends podcast. Today we have Kyle Hops. Hi. We got Connor Hops. Hey. And we got Matt. I'm so sorry. The fucking last name has escaped me. The price is right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Matthew Price, that's who we got. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's the intro. That's the one right there. It might there. go with the other intros. Who knows? Hey, just put them on top of each other. I don't have any control of the editing process. That's Kyle. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get right into it here. Connor, let's start with you. We never start in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I guess we don't start in the middle. Um, on that creme, that Oreo creme <laughs> that people have been looking for. Um, yeah, it's been a good week. I've been continuing, continuing to run... A mile every like other day sometimes on back-to-back days that doesn't happen very often but at least every other day um so i'm gonna go run again today if uh, it's not raining when we get done with this but been going pretty good with that i'm losing just a little bit of weight here and there probably another month or two i'll be satisfied with where i'm at you know because it's not like i'm fat but it's just like you know you get that like that amount of stomach fat down the bottom it's like you got to yeah, I guess you got to run it away, man. That's really the only option. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna c- continue doing that. Uh, last weekend, I took out my electric scooter for like a 14 mile ride. Nice. It was really really cool. Um, I had like this tiger stripe sunburn after I was done with it because <laughs> I was wearing elbow pads, you know. So I took those off and everything. It's like, oh, dude, this is crazy. Um, so I was trying to lean into that, acting like a cat for a little bit, but that didn't really work for me. Um, were you on uh, roads or on a, like sidewalk trails? Uh, I, a little bit everything. Um, a little bit so everything. I went from the ladies like get over, bitch. Uh-huh. Um, nothing crazy. Coming like, on through, slut. <laughs> nothing uh-huh. crazy like that. Um, get in the scooter lane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like I just took like mainly side streets. Like I didn't like take seventh or anything like that or main or anything. Um, so yeah, I just take, took like sixth and then I went down to like Landreth, rode all the way around Landreth Park, that little walking trail thing that, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's like a asphalt trail, rode all that pretty high speed, taking those corners pretty fast, um, having a good time there. And then I just like went right up to Frisco trail. Cause it's just like a couple blocks away, uh, started the trail, went all the way up to Webb, then came back to my house and up being like a 14 mile trip. A little nice. over an hour, so that sounds fun. You awesome. still got like forty-five miles on that sucker, don't you? As um, far as battery goes, yeah. Um, I've been riding it here and there as well, so yeah, I still haven't charged it yet, which is cool. And I've had it for like a little bit, but then again, it's been raining a lot, so I haven't been able to ride yeah. to work every day. Weather has not been not been nice. Mm-hmm. Yesterday was like the one nice day we've gotten out of the last two weeks for the mm, most part, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, after riding, I decided to go ahead and buy that seat that I was looking at. I bought the twist throttle because just, you know, like holding your, yeah, like a motorcycle. Cause like holding your thumb down like that on a, a thumb throttle for an hour, Ooh, that is, yeah, it really that messes with thumb. your hand, dude. I'm like, if I'm going to ride a long time, I need a twist throttle. So went ahead and bought that. Um, so just, yeah, waiting on those to get in the mail. Uh, but what was really cool is I, I discovered that there's like settings in a little speed controller thing that you can mess with. Um, there's like a cruise control that the it like automatically comes with. So like if you're set at like like you're going like 26 for like five or six seconds, it'll just lock you at that speed and you like cruise control is just on. Hmm. And it's actually kind of scary <laughs> having cruise control on a scooter. So I turned that off. Um, but it, like, yeah, cause he, <laughs> I can imagine, man, because you let off the gas, being like, "I'm slowing down. I'm not gonna fucking ram into the back of this truck." Right? Yeah, it's like you, you expect, you expect like, 
I don't know, like your inertia to like slow down or whatever. But it's like instead, it's like you just keep going. And it's like that scary feeling, like oh shit, like <laughs> hit the brakes, you know. Um, but yeah, just turn that off. Also, like those scooter scooters have like a push start thing where you got to like kick off, or I guess a kick start. Um, so yeah, you got to kick off and then you can hit the throttle. I turn that off to where it's just like you can just throttle from the get go, you know. Okay. Um, and then there's one more setting I'm going to mess with eventually. It's like, uh, it's the actual acceleration of the throttle. Like there's an option where like it's automatically set to like a smooth, like ramping up period, you know, where it's like slow throttle and it kind of builds up. Mm-hmm. You can I'm, make it to where it's just, it's just right there power there. all the way. I'm going to yeah. try that once I get the twist throttle and the C I'm like, I don't know if I really want to mess with it right now, but that's the best part about like battery power or battery operated like vehicles and scooters and motorcycles is like you can have the power all just right there like mm-hmm. all the torque mm-hmm. yeah and that's that's, that's gonna be fun. a lot of fun, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah I'm, I'm really excited for getting all that stuff in messing with it and then um might get some stickers maybe put some stickers on it pimp it out yeah <laughs> glam it up uh, spinners <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um, but yeah, then I still need to buy like a legit motorcycle helmet, you know, um, that'll probably be like the main thing I wear. I don't know if I'll be wearing too much else. Cause I don't really go too fast on that thing. Like most of the time I was going like 26, you know, yeah. average speed. So you can get yourself a kind of like a novelty looking one, like one that just looks like a bald head with ears on the side. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> well, I like to There's get a lot one. of different mo- motorcycle. Yeah. I like to get like one of those like uh, like motorcycle gang helmets that you see in like I don't know if it was like one of the Batman and Robin movies or something, but it's like the ones where it's okay. got the mohawks and stuff, or like the spikes in the helmet or whatever, you know. <laughs> Just kind of go with like that kind of style. I don't I know gotcha. if I'll have to like build it myself or what. It's a, it a road race, no rules, <laughs> <laughs> and half of it's not on the road either. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just like, carry around like a hockey stick or something. Be That'd be cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, aside from the, all the scooter stuff, which is really, really cool and really interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, just watching TV, uh, started rewatching Battlestar Galactica. I forgot that in the second episode of that, they nuke a little girl. I don't know if you remember that, Kyle. You've watched it a bunch. Yeah, I remember that. But yeah, they nuke this little girl in the second episode. I'm like, dude, this is why this show is so awesome. Uh, but no, it's it's actually because like in the first episode, everybody's like having sex left and right. It's like, oh, dude, th- this ship is horny as hell, dude. Um, but then it goes into like, oh, not only are they horny, uh, horny they're like in danger. <laughs> <laughs> they're ornery, too. Yeah, they're horny. They're so horny and ornery. <laughs> They're in danger. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> They're up to horn good. Nor- no, I don't fucking know where I'm going with that. <laughs> They're in no, horn good. Yeah. That's how a lot of these, uh, how a, lot of, a lot of these, uh, like, epics, it's like start out, throw a lot of sex in there in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Get them hooked. Uh-huh. Yeah. Draw them in. Sex, danger. Think about it. Battlestar Galactica, Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Almost every other HBO drama that's like, been a huge hit. Mm-hmm. Keep going. I named them all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. 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 I uh, just said all of them. <laughs> but like, what kind of inspired me to start watching that again was like, I I've, I've been watching Star Trek Discovery on Paramount, and dude, it sucks so bad, man. The season five is like, it's the worst season by far, and like seasons three and four sucked really bad too, and this season five sucks real, real bad. And, like, I'm finishing it out. Like, you can't stop me. Um, I've got, like, probably, like, four episodes left in the season, if that, if they go to ten episodes. So, yeah, I'm going to finish it out. Believe that. Um, But, no, I don't want to do it, you know. So, I'm like, I'll start watching Battlestar Galactica, kind of even it out a little bit, you know. Were you going to say something? Uh, Yeah. you needed a palate cleanser is what it was. You yeah, need, it's like I need like, a good sci-fi to kind of yeah, settle me down. <laughs> what lost it for me on that discovery was like, like when they went to the future, it was supposed to be badass, but it was like, no, the reason why everything's fucked up is because there was one guy that really had a bad tantrum and made all warp drives inactive. I was like, that is the stupidest premise for a sh- like a bad guy or a threat or something for a whole season. It comes down to, 
oh no, what it was is a guy just freaked out and he has a telekinetic connection with all the tillium in the in the whole universe and that Wait. makes all the freaking fuel blow up in every starship. It was very dumb. And yeah. it's like, wait, that was the reason for all of this. And season one was just so good, dude. It, season you know? one and season two. And season two, yeah. But specifically one was so great. Yes, season two man. was really good, too. But then, yeah, three, four, and five had just been so bad, dude. Oh, man. Mm. Is that it, part of the writer's strike, you think? No. No. No, it was no, before the writer's strike. It, it, they lose two really good actors that really held the show together, in my opinion. Um, mm. The main captain, Captain Lorca, I forget his name. Yeah, he plays uh, um, Dirty Mudblood, his dad. Um, gosh dang it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the, Draco's there's dad. something Malfoy. Draco's yeah. dad, yeah. 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 Um, and then also Michelle Yoon or Yoon. Michelle or, Yo. Or Yo, okay. And she's the best, dude. Yeah, she's really good in that show. You guys know Michelle Yeoh, right? Uh, I think so. The chick from know. Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh, okay, okay yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't even need to look her up. Yeah, she's in season like one and two, so you know that that's going to be awesome with her in it. But yeah, they lose those two actors, and it really tanks the show. Because then they got to focus on these other characters that just are not interesting at all, dude. <laughs> like, really? It's like, they try to make you, like, feel for these people, but it's like, dude, they're just they're so boring. They're not good actors, you, you know? You lost the badass part. Yeah. You, know, you lost the bite, you know? Yeah. But yeah, aside from that, um, also rewatching Super Crooks. I was going to tell Jackson to re to watch it, but I'm like, ah, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Super Crooks? Yeah. Cartoon on Netflix. Car cartoon on Netflix. Hmm, I've never heard of it. Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it like three or four times, but it's all good. Um, but yeah, I'm like, I'm at episode 10 on that. It's only like 13 episodes. And yeah, I really need to watch that. It's, it, on, it's a Millerverse show, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's got um, a lot of blood and F-bombs and sexual content. <laughs> all uh, the stuff guy needs. Yeah, a lot of like almost all boobs. Definitely a lot of side boobs. Are there any... <laughs> Are there any sex bombs? Sex ba bomb? <laughs> oh, okay. No. None of those. No sex bombs, but they, I mean, there is sex, but you don't get to see it. It's like usually like aftermath of sex or pre sex. Hmm. You know, you see a lot of that. So it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Assault on Arkham, that one. Yes, yeah. exactly. A lot of dead. Deadshot and Harley Quinn yeah, that yeah. energy. That was a weird movie. And Deadshot is going like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you're the girl, girl, but now you're my girl. You know? Shit was weird. Man. Yeah, it was some crazy stuff. But yeah, I'd say watch that if you want to see like a heist type uh, super super villain show. Pretty cool. And yeah, that's that's mainly been my week. What's up with you, Matt? Uh, not a whole lot. Just been busy with work. Uh, they kind of made me. It's, they call it BC. So I don't know what BC stands for, like something coordinator, but uh, technically AKA manager. Big C. Big C. <laughs> yeah, big C. But uh, they made me a manager at work over like our uh, small group of drivers and stuff. So I've been kind of busy dealing with that and everything. Uh, it probably stands for like boss class. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was thinking yeah. something because like I heard the title coordinator. So I was thinking maybe put business coordinator, but I don't know, or boss coordinator. Boss coordinator. That's what you should go with. You should tell everybody you're the boss coordinator. I am the boss coordinator. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me speak to a manager. How about a boss coordinator? <laughs> <laughs> Even boss better. Coordinator. I'm a boss coordinator, man. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like have access to like this, like program, uh. That lets me see like where everybody's at, like how many they packages they have left, all this other stuff. God's like, eye. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> the boss fast, eye. Fast, sa fast seven. God's yep. eye. Yep. The boss. Oh yeah, God's eye. I almost forgot about <laughs> that. Ramsey says God's eye. <laughs> that God. part just got wiped from my memory. <laughs> the only the only thing I remember about that movie is the part where they're in that hyper car in the towers and it's like. No brakes! <laughs> no brakes! Cars dude, don't fly. That movie's badass, dude. <laughs> the seventh one was probably the best. It, it didn't make any sense. It was hyper, like, unrealistic, but it was the best. God, mm -hmm. I think I might watch one of those today, man. I, I think Sounds probably good. the best part was when Vin Diesel's like, 
the thing about street fights is the street always wins. And he ground pounds the ground and tears it all apart. <laughs> It's a very, it's a superhero moment, man. And it, it is. And that's it, when the, tr that's when the series flips right there. It's like, <laughs> that's when he gets superpowers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is when it's like, all right, we're going full on retard. <laughs> it was that's the near death role. experience activated his meta gene. You they, know? they had to like give him the, uh, the bunch of the like, cast superpowers because that the same one, the rock also broke out of an arm cast <laughs> and then pulled a chain gun from a drone. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's not forget about that part. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, what that first dude that he beat with a torque wrench looked like in the, before the first movie happened? Oh, God. Well, you see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't it in the ninth movie? I think so. That's the one where it, like, starts doing all the flashbacks with John Cena and all that. Oh, no, man. There was, there were, I stopped watching them, man, because I was just like, I'm... These are not the same movies, man. <laughs> they're, they're really not, yeah. I, I, Brian O'Connor ain't in these anymore, man. It's not Fast and Furious to me anymore. Yeah. True that. But uh, now just like, just uh, watching, like watching over them, helping them out. I'll, I'll usually be like out late helping somebody. And uh, try to, I haven't done much of anything else this week, which kind of sucks. I am. I did make plans this weekend. Like I have uh, Sundays and Mondays off now, so today I'm gonna get uh, more ink done on my arm. Damn boy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, tomorrow or yeah, tomorrow Monday, I'm gonna get a haircut. So hopefully, I'm thinking about getting some piercings. Now. I thought you were gonna say pussy. <laughs> you never know, man. That just comes across. <laughs> Comes across the way, you know. You, I like. I sometimes go over to this place on Seventh Street for it, you know. Okay. Nine Lives. You ever heard of it? No. Nah. The place with all the cats. Ooh. There's a bunch yeah. of cats. Yeah, there's a bunch of cats there. You can like drink coffee and pet the pussy and stuff. But, anyways, you you never heard of it? It's like right no. there on. on I went 7th to a Street. birthday party there, man. Bunch of kids. It was cool. I haven't been there myself, but I have, a, I have an older brother who's been there. But I've seen it from afar through binoculars. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've seen it from afar, read it on a website. But I left a, I left that party and told this dude, I'm like, dude, you're super racist and got the hell out of there. It was crazy. Damn, that sounds like a... Did you? Yeah, bro. Crazy. That sounds like a rager. Mm -hmm. It was, man. It was a good party until... The dude got real racist and I couldn't handle it. And I was like, this is, what is happening here? <laughs> back to you, Matt. Vibe. Yeah, yeah, back to you, Matt. But that's pretty much all I got for this week. I can't. Lay out the, uh, lay out the ink, lay out the piercings, lay out the cut. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. Want to hear it, huh? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like this, okay? Just got to look at it. At an yeah. ankle. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. all you need, man. Okay. Yeah. Keep you. You keep you to you, man. Uh, yeah. I see. Also, like I've kind of really started getting it back into. Like I've been into it before, but like back into car detailing. So like I'm kind of like washing, like cleaning cars for fun. Okay. But nice. Yeah. Uh, I've like started trying to get into like uh. I've never done it before, but, like, paint correction and stuff, like, buffing it and, like, doing polishing and waxing, paint correcting and all that stuff. Because, like, with, like, paint, you could see, like, it's hard to see, but there's, like, swirls on, like, 90% of people's, like, cars and paint jobs and stuff. And you could, like, fix it and make your paint, like, stand out and pop more with, like, polishing and paint correction and stuff. So I've been trying to learn how to do that so I could actually try it out on a couple of just you know cars here and there that's you're trying to get to you trying to get to the point where you're just like a one man delivery service that can go around and be like all right you need a detailed card you need your like stuff buffed out need brakes checked no oh, yeah i can do that too yeah i just i don't, I don't know it's just like something that i just wanted to do for fun here lately so there's that <laughs> <laughs> there's satisfaction out of seeing stuff be corrected or stuff be cleaned yeah yeah for sure and it's like power wash simulator but in real life yeah i it's like real life if it's, it's better definitely in real life for sure because i've <laughs> I played power washer simulator and I'm like like as i'm playing it i'm just like man like 
I get this like weird anxious feeling in my like body and my arms and my hands. I'm like, I just, I can't sit here and do this. I got to do it mm-hmm. in real life. You know, like it's actually spray the house down and stuff. Mm. Dude, I get that feeling whenever I, I, I beat power simulator. I completed all of the fucking levels. And at the end of it, I was like, why do I not just have like a power washer myself and just go outside and power so, wash it? You should get one, dude. I have one, I have one out back. I have one. I have one too. That's like I, I had one. I bought one back in 2017. It's like a gas powered one and like really, really good one for a Honda brand. And like that's like the thing is like power washing something is so satisfying. No joke, dude. It's weird. Getting all that weird green algae off your siding is like what is happening right now? It's, or just it's like using a big eraser. Just cleaning the crap out of your car or the sidewalk or just like anything. Yeah. Especially the sidewalk, man. Especially when you have all this dirt, you can like write stuff in it, man. It's so crazy, yeah. dude. Yeah, for sure. I'll uh, have to have you over, man, and do whatever I'm doing. It's, it's I'm telling you, Jackson, once you try a power washer, you won't look back. <laughs> it's one of those things that's like, it's like in your man, like you, you want to use repertoire. You, you have, yeah, in your repertoire, your tools, your. Your escape from <laughs> from everything else. <laughs> Part of your aesthetic, Jackson. You'll get real wet too, and you'll like that. It's uh, your manhood. Oh man! I'm trying to think if I've been. Wa- I watched. I finished Fallout last week. This TV show. Hell yeah! Mm-hmm. And I tried to play some uh, Fallout Four last weekend, but then like I just got kind of burnt out on it. Like all of a sudden. Like, I played all day with, like, a Fallout 4. I played with an account that wasn't modded, trying to get some achievements and stuff. But then, like, I just came across, like, the, the latest update. They, like, put, like, some kind of enclave quest line where you get, like, uh, ambushed by these enclave troopers and stuff. And they're always higher level and shit. Yeah. And they take a ton of bullets and, like, vats to kill. And so, like, I was like, screw this. I'm going to go to my modded account and have some fun with mods. I run into the same problem. And, like, I'm playing with a character that's, like, you know, I cheated. I modded. Like, all of his stats are just, like, crazy high, you know? And, like, these guys, they're still not going down. Like, it takes, like, ten minutes to kill one of these guys. Damn, dude. It's, like, ruined my whole entire Fallout 4 experience, (laughs) I'll be honest. Have you, like, Googled it to see if there's any, like... I've tried, like, you gotta, like, complete the quest. I don't know if I, like, fell into some kind of trap to activate this quest, the ambush to keep happening, but you gotta, like, do the quest, and all of a sudden, they're just, like, way higher level to the point that they just barely take any damage from, like, your Mm. overpowered weapons. It's, like, it's ridiculous. So, I I ended up downloading Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas on my Steam Deck, so eventually I'll play those. Nice. But that's about it on gaming. I'll nice. play, I'll probably play New Vegas at some point, because I've never played New Vegas, and a lot of people say New Vegas is the best one as far as story. Yeah. But it is pretty good. I like the fact that it's your courier and stuff, instead of a vault dweller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But supposedly it still runs like garbage. Yeah. Even today, it still runs like garbage. On the Doesn't run deck? the best. Yeah, New Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's glitchy. Even, even after all these years, it's still bad. Janky. It's yeah. crazy. I don't remember it being that bad, though, when it first came out, when I first got it. But it just could just be the nostalgia. Well, also, when it first came out, you were probably so young, you didn't notice bad frame rate. True that. Dude, because I remember playing GoldenEye and seeing the bad frame rate and not thinking anything of it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I remember mm-hmm. there'd be times when the explosions were happening and it'd be like... Yeah, I remember that. And it, <laughs> just seeing it, knowing it was happening, but not really, like, caring. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. In a way, in your head, you're like, is so much explosive stuff going on, the game can't handle it. Yeah, well, like, it comes I, with slow mo. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's whatever, you know. Yeah, for me, I was like, oh man, it's slow in frame rate because I'm too fucking awesome. <laughs> it can't <laughs> handle me. It crazy just made me feel on. good. <laughs> what did you think of the show, Fallout TV show? I loved it. Me loved too. It. Yeah. I'm ready for more. I hope there's more soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the ghoul pretty much stole every scene. 
Walton Goggins. He was amazing in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Fucking ten out of ten actor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you drive that thing like a shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> I tell people I'll, well, I want to start saying that to some of the drivers at work. Just be like, you drive that thing like a shopping cart. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the show was really, really good. I love the, uh, so like, I love the, all the ghoul parts, but the part where Lucy and, uh, what was his name? Maximus? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They were in that vault. I can't remember which vault it was. With four? Him. Yeah, four with the one-eyed guy. The yeah, whole- dude. Isn't that Chris Parnell? I yeah. think so, yeah, yeah. God, so that guy was everyone funny. was wondering if they were like related because her name is Ella Purnell and his name is Chris Parnell, but they're they're not the same last name. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, are they related? But like, some people were like trying to make that connection before, and then just so happened they ended up being on an episode. So, so oh. dumb. She has a, she has a British accent. He doesn't like. It's who, <laughs> yeah, he was plainly white, like American. <laughs> yeah. American cheese, mm-hmm. for sure. I love the I love the show. All the, uh, all I don't know. I, I wouldn't call them Easter eggs, but like just references to the sh- to the games and mm-hmm. stuff. How they had a bunch of references across all of the games instead of just like one or two of them, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, looking back, like I can't believe playing like Fallout Three in New Vegas back then. I liked the power armor setup then. Compared to, like, now, like, on Fallout 4 and the TV show and uh, 76, it's, like, you know, you get in it, and it's, like, more bulky and it looks correct. Like, looking back, the power armors on Fallout 3 in New Vegas were just weird looking. <laughs> <laughs> they just... The, but more, more Iron Man-ish or something? They were, like, uh, they were smaller and just, like, not as detailed, in my opinion. Mm, as the yeah. Fallout 4 ones. But they were, like, also, like, more or less, like, equipable, uh, like, armor clothes and stuff like that. Mm. Like, any regular game. It's, that Maximus character was a real dumbass. <laughs> I honestly, like, yeah. his character, I would probably like the least. He was, like, he just didn't have, like, the charism- the charisma like I felt like he needed just like every scene he was just like had this look on his face like he just didn't have anything to say mm-hmm. at the times. He was just yeah. a dumb NPC that was just along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's like, I need yeah. the armor. The <laughs> stuff was just happening to him, and he was just there for most of it. You Want to make my cock explode? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, whole shit. Never I'm trust like... a man who is scared to eat jack. <laughs> never trust a man who is scared to eat jack. <laughs> <laughs> Great show, though. Oh, yeah. I loved it. Mm-hmm. There's no way it won't get plenty of seasons, man. At least four seasons. At least. At least four seasons. I'll take it. <laughs> Do they renew it for four? I don't know. Oh. It's like, God dang. I'm just saying. <laughs> what, do you, what do you know? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's like a season two confirmed, right? Oh, God. Season yeah, two is definitely confirmed. Yeah. For sure. I just wish that... These companies, like, okay, if they have one good successful season and it's obviously a hit, go ahead and just green light them for three or four seasons and give them something to work with, you know? Yeah, let them create, let them have something that's going to span a bunch of seasons so they can create an overarching story. Kind of like what they're doing with Invincible right now. It's like, you know what? Invincible's a hit. Everyone's loving it. We are going to go ahead and green light up to season. They're doing up to season five, aren't they? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Because with how sped up the show is versus how many volumes there are, like, it's kind of crazy. Like, halfway through the volumes, you're already, like, at the end of season two. It's weird. They speed up. They speed it up so much, man. So they can probably only really need, like, five seasons to do the whole story with how much they're speeding it up. Mm. And if they decide to do all the, like, side stuff in the show, too. Because I've been uh, looking through, like, the Invincible comics. I think I'm through issue three or something like that so far. But, uh, yeah, I noticed I was, like, looking at the reading order of how to read the entire Invincible story in order. And there's a lot of side stuff, too. Mm Mm-hmm. Technically, it begins with the Adam Eve stuff, which they ended up making a 
like animated thing about that. So I wonder if they're going to make more animated things about all the other side stuff. Maybe. Yeah. Or they could just work it in the show like they did that one episode about uh, uh what's his name the guy that voices Seth Rogen or Seth Rogen voices uh, Alan the Alien yes yeah. they had like a whole Alan the Alien episode of that Invincible just shows up in the last ten seconds or something like that yeah the secret back the backstory good stuff man yeah you said uh, give it like more seasons so they could have a story I was thinking Lost you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, if we could have Lucy find a hatch and then hit a button every, like, so often, I think that'd be the way to go. Finish out Fallout. Lost style. That's just me, though. I don't know. <laughs> just some thoughts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wish I understood the reference. Oh, you're good, bro. Never watched Lost. Lost. <laughs> Lost was a really good show until the end when you find out some stuff. You know, just go ahead and tell me. Turns out they were dead or something. Everyone's dead the entire time? Yeah. I think I remember. But it's a nebulous ending, though. You don't really truly know. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because like, they've been stuck in limbo or something? Yeah, pretty much. They like they crash a plane, um, and then like some of them survive. They wash up on a beach, and then cra like crazy stuff starts happening. They see like a polar bear. Um, they end up going back in time at one point. Like All these kinds of crazy things happen. There's like this crazy like black smoke monster that's like flying around and making weird noises and stuff. And some people are there and they're almost like God entities in, in a way it's just, it's all weird. It's all very weird. But in the end, yeah, you find out that the plane crashed or something and that they all died. Yeah. It's just like, what they all end up back in a plane or something going to heaven or something. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> that's trippy. Hmm. I don't know if it ends like quite like what Connor's saying. Okay, when's the last time you watched Lost? Okay, the last season. The last season, they all end up getting rescued in the last season, right? And then they end up being like, "Oh, we got to go back to the island." Yeah. And then they all end up going back to the island. I think that's how it ends—is them going back to the island or something like that. Partially, yeah. But all I know is it wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry for the references here. Uh -huh. You know, they're outdated. It's a, it, hey, that show's been around forever, and I've always been like, why is everyone pissed off at that show? And I don't want to watch it. So Same. It's, right. it's good until the end is one of those things. Like you keep you keep going like, oh, this new mystery. Where's that? Where's the polar bear? Where's it from? Like you keep going like, oh, well, all these crazy things. Who took this kid? Um, and then you're just like, okay, well, it all doesn't matter. And it's funny you're talking about Lost because that head that they're bringing around throughout the whole season of Fallout is, is like the, the main bad guy from Lost. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> once, he, once he shows up in the in Fallout, I was like, dude, it's fucking Ben from Lost, from dude. Lost, like, yeah. here we go. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. I recommend Lost personally, dude. I think fucking Lost is great up until the end. But like it's a wild ride it's up a, until yeah, it's crazy. It yeah. is it is really good. And there's some spot there's some spots in there where I I cry like every time I watch it. There's some really, really, really good shit in Lost, okay. man. Like some great sexual tension. Yeah, <laughs> dude, and ugh, there's some scenes, man, where I'm like, fuck yes, dude, we finally got to this point like this point in the show. And like me and Rachel rewatched it probably like ten years ago together and I I fucking love it. But I'm one of those people that loved it. But right. I like Damon Lindelof stuff, and he did The Leftovers. Um, he also did, I'm pretty sure he did that Mrs. Davis show, I want to say. Really? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's neither here nor there. Jackson, how's your week been, man? Did we already talk about your week? No, nah, man, we didn't. Uh, yeah, man, just been hanging out, playing video games, Fallout 4, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm been trying to like beat the dlc because i always have a knack of whenever i start to play that game i complete almost everything in like the regular game and then whenever i move over to the dlc portions that's when i get that burnt out feeling on the game so now i'm kind of just starting with the dlc like doing some stuff in the mainland every once in a while if i just kind of get tired of looking at uh far harbor or nuka world but yeah, I'm having a lot of time. I'm or having a lot of fun playing that game. Uh, I did notice that somebody uh, was playing. No, it wasn't uh, Fallout. It was Skyrim. Someone was playing Skyrim, and they had modded the game to where, whenever he was streaming it, the whoever was like typing in the chat, 
they had control over the chat of the NPCs and could voice everything. And it was the funniest fucking thing ever, man. Every single person he came up and talked to is like, like the text would be like what they would normally say, but what they would actually say would be like, and then the next person would be like, like you look like someone that can take a nice, good pounding into chocolate starfish, stuff like that. He could not get like a normal thing said from anybody. He was just like, dude, what the fuck is going on chat? But it was one of the funniest things that I've seen this week. Um, I've also like been in a new lane of music and that's like, uh, songs that sound like other bands. Hmm. Uh, there's this one dude. There's like several people that actually do this, but one dude specifically, I can't remember his name, but he did like a version of When I Come Around by Green Day, but it sounds exactly like Smashing Pumpkins. And I've been trying to just like f- create a playlist of all this different music that's like, okay, I'll put this on there. If Incubus did... Duality by Slipknot. Okay, throw that on there. And I'm only putting them on there if I actually like them. Mm. The plan is I'm going to create a playlist and then I'm going to throw it to you guys. And try to kill Kyle and try all to in kill one go. go. Try to kill Kyle all in one go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lock him in a trunk and be like, "Here you go, Blake 182, Semi Charm Live." Did you feel my brain spinning? <laughs> <laughs> thinking about how much I'm like oh fuck man you've infiltrated infil- infiltrated my other playlists as well with this kind of shit <laughs> every once in a while dude I'm like I'll be playing something I'm like this doesn't sound right and then I'll look at it and I'm like oh it's this by this I'm like what the fuck Jackson how did you get this in here <laughs> it started out with Hurt by Johnny Cash <laughs> and I was like, now it's come to this <laughs> So I've been like digging that lane of music lately. Um, I'm going to be getting uh, a MIDI controller, probably not this upcoming paycheck, but the paycheck after that. Got a <laughs> interesting. I got to replace brakes and sound like a month or so. Change. I got to do something like as soon as I get my next paycheck, all that money is basically spent. So. So with the next paycheck that I have that I can actually buy it, where I'm like, all right, I got $200. I can buy it. I'm going to go ahead and get it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Which one are you going to get? Cool, man. <laughs> it's uh, the one that Kyle recommended to me, but it's like the pro version of it. Just has like a few more knobs and things that make it a bit more functional. Mm-hmm. Knobs that make you go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cool. But yeah. I'm excited to actually have a MIDI controller that I can use to control and put in drum samples and stuff like that. Finally, we get the drum samples we always wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be cool, man. Finally. Hey, and the key, you get, you're going to get all the... As far as I know, I'm going to try to get you, give you all the stuff now. <laughs> all the instruments. God, I'm going to try to have fun with it. We want you to have fun, man. Uh, You can make a jazz version of the Crashing With Friends theme song yeah mm-hmm. yeah this is the crashing with friends theme song if it sounds like third eye blind <laughs> 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 i'm crashing with friends <laughs> Go like kyle and connor and <laughs> crashing with friends podcast motivation <laughs> <laughs> please subscribe to this channel my friend <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> All right. Uh, do this have, is, do this is crashing with friends. If it sounds like uh, Pearl Jam, come on, crashers! <laughs> 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 Can you subscribe to this channel? <laughs> Kyle's girl. (laughs) (laughs) Jackson, fuck you. (laughs) Oh, my God. What's up with your week, Kyle? Dude, I've been watching uh, a lot of Planet of the Apes type content. 
uh, getting ready for the movie coming out. Yeah, I'm a big Planet of the Apes fan. I watched uh, Rise, War, well, and not in that order. That would be weird. I watched Rise, Dawn, then War for Planet of the Apes. That whole Caesar trilogy is fantastic, man. Um, I mean, I've never, I've only seen, well, I need to watch them again. <laughs> It's and you been saw so him. Long. I know you saw him because you saw the second and third with me in IMAX. The thing is, I remember the first one pretty well. Yeah, the second one, this. dude. Whenever freaking Kobo takes over, uh, Koba takes over and fucking assaults like their main human base, and he gets in the back of that turret thing, and uh. he's just like, Rah! it's just fucking insane, man. That whole war scene is insane. Mm-hmm. So good, man. Um, you were with me. I know you were. Yeah, the thing is, were. like, I haven't watched like those movies since I've seen them in theaters. Yeah, because you couldn't find a good version online with subtitles. Yes. Yeah, I feel, <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> and Kyle's gonna edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, those movies are so good, dude. Um, I've also I watched the new episode of X Men '97, dude. <sighs> these last three episodes are going to just I, they're going to be insane man the last two episodes coming up I mean because there's only two left I don't mean to cut you off here but while I was watching that uh, hockey game last night I could tell that NHL like announcers were reading from scripts because they were like this game has had more drama than X-Men 97 <laughs> and, then, and then they tried to make a Star Wars reference, like reference. It was like, man, this guy, he's he's better than Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> I was like, man, what is going on with like the halftime or the the you know the in between period shows, halftime reports, whatever you want to call them. It's awful. It's awful. Are they, are they the older? The actual commentating during the game, great. Are they older people on the halftime show? Oh, yeah. They're dudes that look like they're, like, getting close to 60. Okay. You know, so they middle age. They don't know <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, they don't. <laughs> they're not watching X-Men 97. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Hmm. Back but, uh, to what you were saying, Cal. Sorry. It's fucking crazy. That's all I got to tell you. It's crazy. Um, that opening theme song. A lot of drama out there on uh, X-Men 97. <laughs> <laughs> so much drama, dude. You don't even know, bro. <laughs> Better than Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff, dude. Um, but I've been really digging on that, man. And once you dig in. I got my blood test back as well. Oh, you got your blood test back. Guess what? Diabetes Al- free? Alien. Diabetes free. <laughs> Alien, yeah. for sure. Alien Diabetes virgin. Free. Diabetes free. <laughs> alien virgin. <laughs> yeah, we've got alien virgin blood in here. We don't know where it came from. According to this alien blood, you inherit a flying saucer. <laughs> from Papa Palpatine. Palpatine. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Palpatine crackers. Yeah, man. Uh, God, where do, where do I where do I go from there? Um, Turn all the lights down now. <laughs> feeling, feeling it, it. <laughs> but that's really been it, man. Right. I've been thinking a lot about human AI synergy, but I wrote down surgery, and that think that's more. If you're using um, like like microscopic surgery, you probably want some AI for that, right? Mm. Yeah. Maybe. Or at least like uh, the nanobots from Agent Cody Banks. Doesn't he have special glasses in that movie? Yeah. He uses them to look at uh, the super fine chick in it. Is that Penelope Cruz? I gotta look it up. <laughs> I think it's Amanda Bynes, right? No, that you're talking about Hillary Duff. Hillary uh, Duff is the uh, love interest in that. But I'm talking about the one that was kind of like the agent that came in. It was like you're going to be aging Cody Banks. Oh, I don't, heck if I know. Yeah, it was your favorite movie. Mm. You, you told me to watch it last week. <laughs> you're like, Jackson, I just watched this. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to shit. <laughs> that was more like my sister's generation for that kind of stuff, man. I mean, it's a spy thriller. I guess, but... Angie it's Harmon. For, it's not for me. Angie Harmon was it. It was not Penelope Cruz. Mm, close. We'll forgive you. Close second. 
She looks almost exactly like Penelope Cruz, kind of, sort of. If, yeah. She's a brunette. <laughs> so what about the synergy? Uh, that I'm freaked out. I don't want it. You don't want AI synergy within your body? No. See, I'm for it. Really? Why? What, why would I not be? That's not an answer. Why are you for it? Why am I for it? Eh, I just feel like my body could be better than what it is right now. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if it can also improve my mind, yeah. I think if you're using like wearable tech, you'd want some sort of AI, especially if you're using like something like jump boots. I was thinking about this the other day. You'd want something to where it could autocorrect you in the air to where you don't jump off and then fall on your back or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Some sort of like rig or system to where it's like something where you don't have to directly control it to make it easier for the user. I getcha. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, Matt? A little bit, yeah. So just think, you've got these like jump boots or something. You've got maybe some armor up top and you're top heavy. You jump and then you don't, like it's your first time jumping. It's like you could easily flip, fall on your head, something like that, you know. And then you got all that weight falling on your head, you're probably going to die. So um, it's one of those things. Also, like if you've got like a jet pack, you know, it'd be good to have AI for that too. I look at it as like, you ever see the, I don't think, I, rem, I remember recommending it to you guys, but did you guys see the movie Upgrade? I think mm. is what it's called. Mm-mm. So that, it kind of reminded me a lot of that movie Bloodshot, except this movie didn't suck. Hey. But I didn't like the Bloodshot Vin Diesel movie, Vin man. Diesel. <laughs> Sorry, man, I didn't like it's it. It's like, it's a good six. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it could have been ruined for me just because I watched Upgrade before it. Okay. It's at least a five. But if I had to compare both movies together, because they're both the same kind of movie, just Upgrade I thought was a better movie. Mm -hmm. Better version of what that movie was doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, I don't know if I could do AI in anything, honestly. I got I to gotta keep it authentic. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like life way too authentic. Although... I totally get, like, using it for, like, training purposes, like jet boots and stuff like that, or jet pack. Like, if you're not used to using one, you could, if you have an onboard AI that could help you learn and stuff. But once you get good with something like that, you want to shut it off because then it's, like, it could hinder you because it's trying to do its own thing to, like, kind of show you how to do it but then like by that time you already have your own way of doing things you know mm -hmm. yeah this is like the buzz lightyear movie yeah i feel you what about jarvis and then friday jarvis replacement i like both of them I, friendly, I like friendly I, AI. I like the AI. veronica the whole veronica ai thing that he had going on with the age of ultron with the hulkbuster armor mm. he called it it was like what was it it was called Veronica, I think. And, like, how it was, like, he had, like, a, a central hub thing to deploy extra parts and, like, probably, like, so, like, in a modular sense of things. Mm -hmm. Like, a, say, like, you had, like, a modular car or a modular Iron Man armor. Mm -hmm. Definitely want AI then. Mm -hmm. Definitely need it then. Because, like... You pop on different hands and stuff like he does in the movie. Yeah, you could, like, communicate with that part, like... Tell it to stay there, like near the battle where he's at, and then, like send parts whenever he needs it. Mm -hmm. So, I guess with like something like that, AI is definitely necessary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're Iron Man, you gotta have AI. <laughs> yeah, you need AI if you're Iron Man. Yeah. If you're Iron Man, yeah. Like uh, Alfred in the MCU is like almost in that Cortana level of AI, though. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably better honestly like I feel like Iron Man like Tony Stark's AI is better than the UNSC in Halo or Dr. Halsey <laughs> <laughs> no, if we could just see his butt <laughs> yeah yeah thanks for bringing that up Kyle <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't watched season 2 of that I'm, I'm not gonna ever watch it no I haven't even watched the first season. I refuse. <laughs> yeah, every time I look up reviews about it, they just keep saying, like, 
it's got nothing to do with the games other than aesthetics. So, mm-hmm. that's why I'm kind of like, fuck it. They should learn a lesson from the Fallout TV show. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That Fallout, Fallout TV show and The Last of Us TV show both basically bitch slapped that show and was like, that's how you do a game adaptation. Mm-hmm. For real. And, like, the Halo TV show didn't have to be about the Master Chief. You know, the Fallout TV show wasn't about the Courier or the... That's where you're fucking Warrior. wrong, Matt. The Halo TV show needs to be about Master Chief. That's the problem here with this fucking show, man. <laughs> it's too much about the ancillary characters. It's too much about this other chick that's fucking with the, the Covenant. It's too much about this other bullshit. And they need to have the helmets on. It needs to be just Master Chief. Liberating, protecting, showing some badass shit. I, I mean, that's true. I just like saying like Halo Reach was a success because, I mean, it, that didn't have anything to do with Master Chief. Yeah, really good ensemble cast. Yeah. I think if you're gonna do like a, a offshoot of a Halo show that's not a real true Halo show, do like an ODST type thing. You know, you call it that. Yeah, because then you could have those guys with their helmets off and it would be okay, and you wouldn't be complaining about it. You know. Yeah. If you prepare people for what you're going to see, like call it Halo Reach or call it Halo ODST, so people know, hey, you're you are going to see some helmet off shit, mm-hmm. but you never see fucking Master Chief's face. See, like also the, <laughs> another problem is they're like, like with Halo ODST, like there was drama between Buck and uh, what's her face, the Recon, Kate. Yeah, that chick. Like with Master Chief, there shouldn't, and the other Spartans, in my opinion, there shouldn't be anything like that. There shouldn't be like human drama or emotion like that it should just be you know spartans they just Mm -hmm. so like if with a halo odst tv show they would be able to get away with something like that but with a a halo tv show about spartans or the master chief specifically they shouldn't do something like that at all like really Mm -hmm. these are the real topics Mm -hmm. hard hitting (laughs) hard hitting uh man I've been listening to a lot of uh, Disturbed this week, that Believe album. Good shit. It is good shit. But, like, it's cr- like to the outside, to a lot of my friends and stuff, it's always like, man, you listen to fucking Disturbed. You know, I would never wear, like, a Disturbed shirt with that freaking <laughs> guy on it. You know what I'm saying? The, the 10,000 Fist guy? Yeah, the evil guy, the <laughs> Disturbed. They, they called him something. I don't remember. Light, got, light up eyes and the. <laughs> he's got a name. He does yeah. have a name. The yeah. teeth on a black face. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, do you guys have any media, like any music you listen to that you're like, man, I would never really admit to my friends that I listen to that shit. Ooh. I'd admit to my friends I'd do about anything. Um, so maybe to a stranger, I would admit s- some certain stuff, some music, so, you know. Like what? I don't know if I'm like really getting into Eiffel 65 or something. It's like, I don't want to go out. It's like, hey, like, do you know about my console? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to start saying shit like that. <laughs> Let me tell you about my console. Yeah. PlayStation. And I'm playing the game for PlayStation all day. Yeah. There's, there, there's the Nicki Minaj song, Super Bass. Fucking love that song. I like, I get down with that. Like, I'll be jamming that thing loud, delivering packages at work and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. It's a boom, 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 babe. But, yeah, like you, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell somebody. Like, yeah, I like that song by Nicki Minaj, Super Bass. <laughs> I almost know every lyric. <laughs> Heck, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Another one for me, man, is uh, <laughs> the first and second Nickelback album, I think, are pretty good. Uh, yeah, old Nickelback was actually. That's where we differ. Yeah. yeah, it really it's just that Silver Side Up album is the only one I really I, I actually enjoy. I went back and listened to a bunch of like that old like Nickelback, Puddle of Mud, all that kind of stuff. The only thing that really stuck with me is Hoobastank. Like Hoobastank can hold up some of their best songs, but then a yeah. lot of the other stuff, I'm like, eh, I'm not really that into. I'm kind of with you there. Alien Ant Farm still holds up too. Oh yeah. Wait, don't they have that song, Movies? Isn't that? Yes. I love that song. Yeah, that song's fantastic. Yeah. The entire album is 10 out of 10. You got any bands, Jackson, that people actually know? Um, man, man, I mean, there's a few. Uh, 
not like bands, but artists that you just be like, dude, what the fuck? You listen to that? Uh, Tiny Tim. I said, like, people actually know. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you. Uh, Tiptoe through the tulips by the tulip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Tiny Tim. Super goofy looking. Sings a super high voice. Gotcha. He's got a lot of good tunes, man. Uh, Bobby Caldwell. Uh, Freaking, like, I've been getting into, like, a lot of yacht rock. <laughs> He's not getting this. I knew you were okay, going to do that. Hold on. You don't get the topic, dude. Okay, a band a, a band that I'm, like, ashamed to listen to? Yeah, you're going to list ones more obscure than that. To be honest, man, like, a lot of those bands that, like, I listen to are just, like, they have the one song that I dig, and then I hate the rest of their discography. <clears throat> Sometimes I get really into Fall Out Boy. Volbeat is a good example. <laughs> well, so now you got one. Volbeat has... That one song that I dig, but I sing it. The the to get the hooky pooky Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that song. <laughs> I don't know why. I'll still put on that song and be like, okay, I guess I'll listen to it. But if any other Volbeat song comes on, I'm like, get that garbage trash off of my radio. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm the same thing with Godsmack. They got one song. That I like, and I'm, I think, dude, I do not like the rest of this music. But I'm trying. I'm at the same point. Even though I just talk shit right there, I'm trying to be the person. It's like I don't want to talk shit on like music anymore. It's just not made for me. That's how I'm looking at it. That music isn't made for me. So, yeah, I get really into Fall Out Boy sometimes. That uh, from under the Cork Tree album, mm-hmm. and I think there's like one other album that also has like good songs on it. And then yeah, I'll just get really into that for like a month. At a time, the, but yeah, I don't admit it to anybody. Yeah, I like that one album that's got the Dead on Arrival on it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember the name of that album too. I always feel, especially now, I always felt like kind of embarrassed to tell people I listen to Drake. <laughs> okay, you should be embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. I, definitely, I definitely like now. Like when I hear him come on, I'm like second guessing. Like I don't know if I want to listen to this right now. Yeah, I wouldn't tell people. I wouldn't tell any more people that. I'm a big PTD fan. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, is there like is there a band or an artist that you guys dislike that a lot of people love? Because I got one. I got two. I've got dislike yeah, I've got that several. people love. I've got several, man. Yeah. Ghost. Uh, I like Ghost. Sleep Token. I don't know if I've heard them. Oh, God. Don't become part of the army, man. Yeah. Don't become part of the worshippers. Dude. <laughs> I honestly think I don't know. This is a very unpopular opinion, but I, it's hard to like Eminem <laughs> anymore. Like I'm I not. Just, I just feel like he's too. Over- I feel like I outgrew Eminem because I, even when I go back and listen to the old stuff, there's like one or two songs that I can like listen to, and then the rest of it, I'm like, man, nah, I'd rather listen to so much more than this right now. Hmm. I don't know. My my taste in rap has definitely changed over the years. Right. I've gotten to the point where I feel like I like more rap, but I dislike a lot of the rap that I used to listen to. All except right. For, except for Tupac and Dre, they stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Not there's not a whole lot that I'm embarrassed to say that I listen to, you know? Yeah, yeah, there was just those two bands for me, really. I would it's honestly disturbed rep. in Nickelback. <laughs> I would honestly rep a lot of the bands that I get. Like, I was telling you, I was looking for a Savage Garden shirts the other day, man. It's like, I want, I want shirts from the bands that, like, I loved whenever I was younger, you know? Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I've got so many metalcore shirts, but I don't have, like, hardly any shirts of bands that, like, I listen to... I'll take it in Enrique Iglesias shirt. I don't give a fuck, bro. Dude, I've got a Shakira <laughs> shirt that I wear, and nobody ever compliments me on it. <laughs> Except for me. Except for Kyle. Yeah. Shakira, yeah. Shakira. I remember talking about how I wanted that one Britney Spears shirt, which she's got the big old python draped across her. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I, was, I was like, man, I want that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> give me that same shirt, but with uh, uh, Wayne's girlfriend Okay. in Wayne's world. Uh, what's her name? I, don't, I can't remember her name. You know what I'm talking about that? Yeah, I know who you're yeah. talking about. She's also uh, the bad... Uh, she's like one of the bad chicks on a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. The one that I fucking... True Lies. True Lies, yeah. Yeah. Mm. She's a hottie bobody. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Ba boom boom boom. <laughs> ba bang bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was looking up some slang because uh, my son and his friend are always saying some crazy slang. I got a little mini quiz I'm going to give you guys. See if you guys know what these slang words mean, okay? Okay. All right, bring it. All right. I'm not going to get... I'll maybe get one or two. Eight and left no crumbs. I mean, that was some good stuff. Some tasty shit. Eight and left no crumbs. Basically, like... Like, uh, uh, kind of like burn somebody, you know, like verbally burn somebody so bad that they didn't have any retaliation. Mm. Eight and That's, left no crumbs. That was the first one that I thought of. What do you think it means, Jack? Exactly what Matt was talking about. Or it, it's m- a, it's a way of like a burning saying like, you ain't nothing. I just, it's like a way of saying like, I just stole your sandwich. That's another, that's the way I look at it. Ate your lunch. Yeah, huh. or it could also be like a fat, a fatty thing. It's like, oh, that fatty ate and left no crumbs. Fat fatty. <laughs> <laughs> Big fat There's fatty. a lot of things. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, so the meaning is used when someone does an exceptional job at something. Tamara just performed all of Bohemian Rhapsody by herself, ate and left no crumbs. That is. The dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, my big fat fatty one makes more sense than that one. Man. Right, that's just what's that's what it means. Can't I, so they did something really good. Yep. See, back in my day, we just made up words and then created definitions for them. Not say something that has completely nothing to do <laughs> with it. So, what do you guys think the the slang beige flag means? Beige flag? Let me look up the color beige real quick. Beige uh, flag? It's like a, it's a dating thing. It, it's a dating thing. It's like a red looks- flag, but it's not a red flag. It's like a, it's just a flag that means, like, it's just a random thing about somebody. You know, it, it means almost nothing. I'm going to go with Connor. Like, it's definitely some kind of... Social like uh, like red flag, like but instead of bad, it's kind of in the middle maybe. It's just a it's just a detail about somebody. Yeah, yeah. social construct of things. Yeah. So a beige flag is somewhere between a red flag and a green flag. Ooh, I said, I said that was pretty close. Matt, Matt's probably closer than me. Yeah. This refers to a behavior or personality trait that is neither positive nor negative. Just a little quirky or strange. <laughs> My boyfriend's beige flag is that s- always sleeps with his shirts on backwards. It's a weird ass beige flag. Mm, that's, that's a stupid more, example. That's more red flag to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <My> boy, <laughs> yeah, that's a more red flag. That's a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, he puts his shirt on upside down. Stop Before he goes so, to sleep. Stop being so beige flag. <laughs> my girlfriend keeps tugging on my ponytail from behind when we fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely her beige flag. <laughs> is that a beige flag? <laughs> okay, the next one here is uh, I can only the only way I can pronounce this is Chuji. Chuji? Chuji. C H E U G Y. Chuji. C H U G Y. Chuji. C H E U G Y. Chuji. 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 I don't fucking know. Chuji. Chuji. It's a girl who's got a little bit of chunk but wants to choose what she eats. <laughs> Chuji. I'm just going to. That's definitely like a kind of a wed, Midwestern, like redneck slang word for like it's just some some redneck, you know? Mm. It, it sounds like he's awfully chuji. It does yeah. sound like so. Yo, chuji. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's chuji out there. Hey, you come on back. Me and my wife can be hanging out in the chuji. Something like that. <laughs> it's gotta <laughs> be. Like, it just seems redneck related to me. A little bit of hoochie, you know. Just a little chuchy. bit of hoochie. Mm. A little bit. Chuchy. Well, all those meanings are way better than this one. Some chuji oh, mama. Boy. The thing is, a lot of this stuff would would make sense if you just said it in a redneck voice. You know, man, you change. Change. There. All, of sudden it kind of, all of a sudden, it makes change. sense. Yeah. Same with like all these pronouns that like trans people are like wanting to use. If you just put an accent on it, it's what's southern. Your, what's it your makes gender? sense all of a sudden. Change. I'm, I'm talking change. about the people that don't want to go by he or she. They're like, I want to go by Zer. Or I, want to go, <laughs> I want to go by Bug. Something like that. 
Like, yeah, bugs going down to the store. You want to be by bug self for a bit? <laughs> Stuff like that. All right. So the real meaning is cringy or awkward, specifically used by Gen Z in reference to trends from the early to mid 2000s. And I can't believe this is happening. All these made up words that we don't fucking know. <laughs> so like, these, there's, these it's people. Happening. It's happening. So these people like would hate on like an iPod shuffle type thing. Is that maybe like the dancing from the iPod shuffle commercials? Maybe they, they would be like Chuji. Yeah, like they, that's so Chuji, man. That's like cringe. You know what I'm saying? But they would call it that's. Um, but only referencing stuff from the 2000s, like the OC, for instance. People would maybe would call that Chuji. Hmm. Maybe that song hmm. Laffy Taffy. 100% chewy, man. Laffy <laughs> Taffy, Laffy Taffy, girl, shake that Laffy Taffy. <laughs> Call me Mr. Jolly Rancher, cause I did <laughs> All right, the next one, gassing. Gassic? Gassing. Gassing. Gassing? Like gassing somebody up. Like, uh, yeah, You're pumping just, someone up. Yeah, pumping someone up, being a hype man, hyping them up. Hyping I feel like that like has two, two different meanings depends on what mood you're in you know you're excelling whatever mood that you're trying to <laughs> get out of them you're trying to piss them off i'll fucking gas them up yeah it's like a turbo boost it's like hitting that turbo it's like going faster it's like you're gassing it yeah you guys you guys pretty much have it to hype someone up yeah hype some, yeah in whichever in any <laughs> emotional way direction that they want to go. In whatever way they want to go, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you, you're trying to take down this uh, hospital? <laughs> I'll gas you up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that man over there in the other corner. He killed your father. You want to kill him? <laughs> so here's one left on red. Left on red. That's like a... Like, like on empty. Ghosted. Left, left on, on red. red. Yeah. Yeah, ghosted. Ghosted. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Story of my empty. life. On empty. On empty, yeah. When you text someone and they read it without responding. Yeah. Oh. Ghosted. Mm. It's all red. Here's another one. Snatched. Snatched? Snatched. That's like after you hook up with a chick and you already got that snatch, you got that snatch. A snatch. So you're at that point you're snatched. Yeah, you've been <laughs> snatched. Yeah. That's what... That's, that's what a four-year-old man... Yells whenever he <coughs> grabs a small child at the playground. <laughs> <laughs> <don't know>. Snatch. <laughs> Snatch. <laughs> oh, man. oh, that's fucked up. Snatch. <laughs> that's all I could think of, man. I was like, snatched. I was like, <laughs> is that what they just call kidnappings now? No. Snatched. Snatchings. Maybe in the 90s, that was the, <laughs> that was the cool thing. Um, another slang term for looking good. Snatched? I don't believe that. Your outfit is snatched. I'm not going to I prefer snazzy one. over snatched. Yeah. Older, less used synonyms are fleek or on point. Those are better. I like fleek. But those are I've older. Heard, I've heard of fleek used. and I've heard on point. If I had to choose of the three, I like on point more. I like fleek same. sounds fucking stupid. Oh, that's why I like saying fleek because it sounds so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fleek. <laughs> it's, it's like when people kept saying like yeet all the time. The only reason why I softened on Yeet is because of that fucking, uh, that game that we played. Fall, where, uh, Fall Guys? Yeah. And I was like, okay, everything is associated with Yeet in this game, so I'm just going to soften on Yeet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for real. I had to as well, yeah. We were mm -hmm. all forced to. It was fun yeah. for a time. It was too fun to get yeeted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the last one here, Sigma. I was Sigma male, like, uh... Not a beta, not an alpha, sigma. They're like, uh, oh, it's hard to it's hard to describe their behavior. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. What, 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 I'm trying to define a sigma male. It's like an antisocial behavior, yet still um, not. But yeah, not not willing to back down. Um, yeah, yeah. I was thinking I would go with something like that. Introvert, an introverted person. That's, but not a. Bitch ass pussy. Yeah, know? not someone that's gonna bend over backwards for anybody. Okay, yeah. so like Henry Rollins in like the nineties and eighties. <laughs> Black flag lead singer, you mean? Yeah. Definitely yeah. like an anti hero type thing. Mm. Another yeah. band from the nineties. <laughs> Trent Reznor, I guess, would probably be a Sigma male. So you guys you guys have it, man. 
um, a male who is popular, but is also a loner who separates himself from the crowd. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were. You guys had it. Yeah. Okay, you guys got gotcha. got a bunch of sigmas up in this house. Yep. <laughs> up in this base. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Sigma base. <laughs> Connor thinks I'm popular. <laughs> so you guys, you guys did pretty good on this. Hell's yeah. We're still hip. We're still hot. <laughs> yeah. Turns out I wasn't. I didn't understand like almost all those. Chuji threw me through a loop, man. But yeah, now you'll use it. I, I totally forgot what it, it, it is. Cringe. Man. Cringe. It's when you're cringe. thinking about mid okay. two thousand or two thousands trends. Okay. And they're cringy. <laughs> I was, yes. gonna, I was just about to say, I, I thought I was going to go good into this test, because I thought he was going to say, what does lit mean? And I was like, oh boy, let me tell you all about lit. <laughs> let me tell you about getting lit. <laughs> lit can mean good. Lit can mean I am fucked up. Lit can mean so many different things. That's not the quiz I, the quiz I gave you, though. That's not the quiz no. you gave me. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So what do we call last week's segment, man? Where my, my new segment... Oh, dude, it is so s- confusing. Um, uh, Sigma stupefy. <laughs> Sigma stupefy. Stupendous. I'm listening to Disturbed playlist. Questionnaire. <laughs> I don't know. Is it Kyle's, Kyle's curious case of curious curios? No, not but, quite, but it is close. Curious case of curious questions. So... I found Kyle's. some odd news. <laughs> All right. I found some odd things this week. Kyle's confounding cases and curious curiosities or something. Concoctions. Mm-hmm. Con- yeah. Conglomerate. I don't know. Just trying to come up with Kyle's concoction, can cake, and Kapako gave me a concussion. Kyle's so. carrot cake. Character. <laughs> you yeah. are carrot cake. Yeah. <laughs> I hate carrot cake. Yeah, you're a gross, fucking dude. carrot cake. I hope you know that. One of the worst cakes out there is carrot cake. Cal, now. you're a fucking carrot cake. <laughs> nice, man. I actually like the key. Kind of like it. Okay. Like the frosting, the frosting on carrot is, cake is yeah. like, I think it makes it. It's weird. It's a weird cake. It's a weird cake. I yeah. just find it to be a funny insult. <laughs> you're a damn carrot cake. <laughs> you're a damn carrot cake. <laughs> Man, I found out this week, dude, that some people put cheese on their apple pies. You heard about that shit? Mm. <laughs> some people in the freaking East Coast put cheese on their apple pies. That's weird, about I'm not going to knock it till I try it. It depends on how much cheese. What kind of cheese? Pepper Jack? American cheese. <laughs> it's probably American cheese, it's, dude. It's, there's, all kinds of diff- there's all kinds of cheese. Yeah. Gouda. Gouda. I don't know how I feel about it. I could see American cheese as a mouthfeel type thing, but seriously, why would you do that? Is you it know? sliced or shredded? Or block? Block and it's cheese. just a block of cheese on the outside. <laughs> In the middle of the pie. <laughs> just melts throughout. Ugh. That'd be gross, dude. I don't know about that. Who are these people? We need to uh, make fun of them online. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go to war with them. <laughs> <laughs> we do. A civil war. A uncivil Tell war. Tell us the secrets of your cheese pie. Yeah, Kyle, what's the secret? If you like cheese pie, you will be rounded up. Cheese pie, the, the secret is just sharp cheddar. Oh. Yeah. Just sharp cheddar? Yeah, just mm-hmm. regular cheddar. Tell cheddar. me what you know about cream pies. Is yeah. it underneath the uh, top crust? It's on top. It's on top. It's on top. A, a little lot sprinkle. Of it? I don't know. There's just a little bit. Just, just, a, just enough, uh, I think, is what it is. I don't know if I believe in it until I try it like Jackson, you know. At Christmas or some holiday this year, we're gonna bring some pie with cheese on it. I'm just gonna ruin the whole. Depends on how that cheese is. Is it pretty glazed on top? You know, just get the sliced cheese, like a burnt. Throw it on top of the whole pie, cover it with sliced cheese. Uh, Oh (laughs) gosh, yeah, and leave one of the wrappers on there. Uh. The oil that's congealed. (laughs) Leave all the wrappers on (laughs) it. Just can't see them. I just can't see the wrappers. Okay, I didn't know they were there. (laughs) So. Have you guys heard about these uh, new microwaves that are coming out that they've invented? Macrowaves? They're reverse microwaves. No. So they make them colder? Yeah. So instead what? of <clears throat> instead of uh, it heating stuff up, it cools stuff. 
So instead <clears> of accelerating <throat> the water molecules, it will slow down the water molecules. Uh, AKA retard them. <laughs> Dude, you can't say that. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can, America. Um, yeah, it basically just rapidly cools food and drinks without using le- electricity. Um, unlike a traditional microwave, which uses microwave radiation to heat items, a reverse microwave utilizes thermoelectric cooling. So we're just going to be having all these freaking microwaves, but they're not. So I, I the could reverse. like I could literally f- turn anything into like a slushy or milkshake or the ice technology. Cream. It's too cool. The technology allows the reverse microwave to draw heat away from the contents inside, lowering their temperature in just minutes. It's crazy. Would it like? I could see it being good for like restaurants and stuff like that, but like the average person at home probably is just gonna throw their stuff in the fridge or yeah. the freezer, or yeah. like just open up the freezer and be like, ice cubes. <laughs> well, the technology's been around for decades in like a giant fashion. Mm-hmm. But Industrial. now the small version is going to become available for home use. Pretty crazy. It's just the, mm-hmm. it's just the innovation of getting it into a small, compact form factor. Yeah. You got to put your hand in it like the, the box in Dune. Yep. Supposedly you're going to be able to, ch- <laughs> you're going to be able to chill, um, you know, like a glass of warm soda or anything like that in like 60 seconds, having the perfect temperature you want it to have it. That could be very, very good. I like exactly. that. Exactly. You I get like that. pour out a beer into a glass, like, a, you know. That was one of the examples they gave here was wine or beer, stuff like that, that you, you don't just, want to put ice in. Exactly. Yeah. But you want it cold now. Mm-hmm. Do they Orange give juice. examples of, like, being able to cool steaks or anything like that? I mean, it makes sense. You should be able to cool you steaks. You should be able to cool <laughs> steak. I don't know. It's all maddening to me. Jackson's always got leftover steak that needs to be cooled. So, <laughs> I mean, just the other weekend. I had yeah. so much leftover steak, yeah. bro. It's of all the steak, man. <laughs> so much when steak. When I reheated it, it didn't taste that great either. I don't know what it, what it was. What it was. Yeah. It was good in the moment. It was great in the moment. Great in the moment. <laughs> and uh, my last one here. Mexican police, I'm not sure if you guys saw this or not. Mexican police say they found five dead after consuming a toxic substance. Five people have been have been found after they drank a poison, a potion in a Santeria power ritual. So they were trying to gain powers by drinking this substance. Didn't happen. Um, the Owa... Oh, Osaka State Police. This happened in Mexico. Chief Ivan Garza or Garcia Alvarez said four men and one woman died after drinking a mix of substances. He didn't specify what the mixture was, but he said that it was a, a sanctuary ritual that began in Cuba when African slaves blended Yoruba spiritual beliefs with Roman Catholic traditions. Alvarez said the victims mixed the potion themselves and drank it to acquire some certain kind of powers. In quotations, he said the deaths at the home are being investigated as a group suicide, and they were trying to they were trying to get powers, but the only thing that happened was they died of poisoning. What kind of powers do you think they were trying to get? Hard mm-hmm. to tell, man. If it's a Santeria ritual, you would think it has to do with the spirit realm or magic in some sort of way. So probably. Dark magic. Yeah. I can tell you what the girl probably wanted. She probably just wanted to talk to her cat. <laughs> you think so, Jehu? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I just want to throw some bullshit out there. I don't know. Probably powers of resurrection is what they were trying to get. Eternal life. <laughs> eternal life. <laughs> Your eternal reward. Any ideas, Matt? Uh, I do like the eternal life idea, but I think the power of attraction. They wanted anytime somebody looks at them, the person would go, <laughs> "That's what power I want." Their eyeballs start rolling in their head. Yeah, yeah. 
Like, damn. I like that. I bet you they probably took like a six person and they didn't know it. I bet you they translated some kind of like stone tablet wrong and then they're like, oh, it takes five people, but the potion actually took six. Mm-hmm. And the six person would get all these powers. Okay, so like one person absorbed everything, all their life essence, and made their escape. And then the backwash carries life over to the sixth person. He gets all the backwash, and then that gives him life. It like The it, good backwash. It like breaks down the poison and mixes with it, like solutions and stuff. A ratio of one to one, backwash, human life to poison. <laughs> The power giving poison, so that's they would have survived. They would have made it with a six person. He would have had powers mm-hmm. for sure. It was a, just a a numbers thing. It is yeah. just a numbers game sometimes with powers <laughs> <laughs> and rituals. Yeah. So when they were making their little design on the ground, they really needed one more person for that <laughs> geometric shape they made, mm-hmm. or a, an entire another village. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes those cultists just don't get a big enough following to make it through. Yeah. Yep, mm-hmm. you just needed one more member. <laughs> That's how that. There's a movie called uh, The Invitation that is kind of like that. Like it starts off with like, all right, we get invited to this house where we meet. Or uh, we, like, reconnect with these old friends that are now a part of a cult. And then all of a sudden, like, at the stroke of midnight or something like that, they go out, light a red lantern, and then they come back in and start killing everybody. And, oh, man. It's a wild movie. Sorry I impressed fucking brought that up, but the, how the movie actually ends is, like, after you see the entire scene happen in the house, you walk outside... And you see that, like, the main characters are now, like, looking, like, off in the distance. And they see that there's, like, red lanterns lit in, like, almost every single neighborhood throughout the entire city. So you realize, like, okay, this shit wasn't just happening at this house. This is happening every fucking everywhere. So I love check that movie out. It's good. Movies <laughs> like that are so thrilling. Like, you're, like, seeing the perspective of, like, this small, limited space of stuff going on here. And you're not sure if it's going on other places. Like, I like stuff like premises like that. So, like, thrilling and mysterious. Very. What was the movie called? Uh, The Invitation. I believe there's two movies that are called The Invitation. The one that you're looking for was came out sometime between 2010 and 2020. There's another one that came out sometime within the last couple of years. Don't watch that one. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> So you shouldn't ever watch it. <laughs> Wait till Jackson watches it. He'll get out yeah. for you. Wait till Jackson. He'll let you know if you need to watch it. I tell you what to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I control the remote. Um, what? Somebody? Jackson. Somebody? What? Oh, I was... You guys want to go ahead and move into Yodu? Check this out. Oh, okay. Okay. Go, dude. Yo, dude. Hey, yo, what's up? Check this out. Yo, dude. Who wants to get us started off? Mm. Yo, dude, check this out. <laughs> All right. Do you guys see that there's a Kingdom Hearts movie in development at Disney right now? Really? Yeah, they're gonna blend in. They're gonna blend CGI with like real life actors and stuff like that, and try to redo what they did with like Disney, like all those real real life remakes and stuff like that. Wonder how they're yeah. gonna do that. I wonder if they're really gonna blend in Final Fantasy stuff, or if it's just gonna be like Disney stuff, all Disney with yeah. like the Keyblade, all that crap and stuff like that, but with no Final Fantasy stuff in it. I, I bet you'll probably yeah. yeah, it'll probably be no Final Fantasy stuff, but you'll probably get this. You'll probably get Star Wars, Marvel. Um, and all the Disney stuff. Or they might just save all the Marvel and Star Wars stuff for the second Kingdom Hearts movie, and they'll just do straight up all Disney, like all the old school Disney stuff. I can see them doing that. Yeah, and hopefully they'll use newer Disney properties like they did in like the second and third game where you Give go to Tron like, World. Where you go to, yeah, Tron. Uh, Pirates is the one that I would always say it's like, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean is great. Everybody loves that, you yeah. know. Definitely got to hit hit up that. Yeah, I have one moment where he's maybe they're running or doing something and they're teleported to or they they go into the pirates world and they're already running down that hill as they're inside that giant like circular 
wheel thing on i think it's the second movie yeah, yeah, crazy yeah. yeah where jack sparrow is just running down that hill and he's inside that giant mouse wheel or what the fuck it is, is. that ball is it like it a like ball a, a cage? it was like it's it was a like cage yeah is it it was i thought it was for it was a uh, which was part a of the wheel uh, yeah it was I thought, a water wheel yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah, yeah those well, first was, those first like three pirates movies are so good yeah they were the best <laughs> and then also toy story would be a great one too because that's in the third game, and that that level is awesome. Do some cool stuff with Toy Story. Yeah, I'm also yeah. just thinking about all the cool moments that they could do with the 2D animation too. Mm-hmm. Of, yeah, because they could, if they wanted to, they could go back to all the way back to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, dude. Yeah, you could go back to Steamboat Mickey and uh, Pete, where he's like their older designs, you know, where they're fighting on the steamboat and all that. I want to say the second or third game you do that. A lot of potential. A lot of potential for a Kingdom Hearts game. Mm-hmm. Um, another Yo Dude. Uh, Yo Dude checked us out. Um, Do you guys see that Jeff Bridges is going to be in the new Tron movie? Mm-hmm. All Freaking right. Sick, dude. Like, I wonder what role he's going to play. But I wonder if they're going to have his son in there. Or if, they, if it's still in the same world. or w- I mean, if it's got Jeff Bridges in it, it's got to be in the same world. But, like... what? Because the end of the, the second Tron movie ends so crazy. They get out with, like, a... Ro- like, with a... <laughs> computer program it's just like what yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> crazy uh yeah dude check this out kind of just a, like a little thing here um hell divers 2 uh sony recently made players sign into a sony account and that has made it to where everybody's pissed off and apparently like 177 different regions um you can't create a playstation account so like all these different players um, can't play it anymore, and Steam is all like offering like refunds to people, and like normally there's like a limit to where if you play more than two hours, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. can't get a refund. Well, that like people with like hundreds of hours of gameplay are able to get refunds now because of that. It was pretty crazy, man. It made the reviews go from like mostly positive to like mostly negative, like overnight. Yeah, within two yeah. days they got eighty thousand. Bad review bombs. Mm-hmm. It makes for, sense. The game's been up for like three months, and you're just now doing this? Like, from what mm-hmm. I've heard, uh, the devs at uh, Helldivers are trying to get in talks with Sony, saying like, hey, let's not fucking do this. Mm-hmm. Look at what it's just done. Yeah. We mentioned it, and now, and some people, I've seen some people online saying that like, they said that they were going to do this whenever the game came out, and I'm like, well, they didn't like make it like super prevalent you know yeah exactly they're See, more worried about fixing the game you know yeah i just the way i look at it is that it just looks like a bullshit thing that playstation is doing to get all Money. the ah basically all ah. the united states your data, um your information like, yeah they want our information mm-hmm. that's the only reason why they were wanting to do it they want our information I like how and they said it was like for security reasons, like help and security. I'm like, yeah. bro, so Sony, you guys is, been hacked so Sony many times. is pathetic with their like cyber security. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just and bad. It, it's probably more like showing to their investors that they've got new player base and new subscribers and stuff like that mm-hmm. showing growth. But I mean, yeah, it's a dumb way to show growth. It is a dumb way to show growth, especially when you can just go ahead and add those numbers into your account anyway and you don't all you have to do is be like call up hell divers hey how many steam users have we got all right add those into the playstation account yep yeah those are our players you know i mean it's a playstation game you don't need to have them in a playstation account to say that they're your players you know mm-hmm. in my opinion yeah fix it <laughs> <laughs> yo dude check this out uh Nearly two-thirds of all the meteorites that are discovered on the actual planet Earth are found in Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's pretty gnarly. I'm assuming that, like, all everything else just ends up burning up before it can even get to the planet's surface whenever it's not heading towards Antarctica. Something to do with the magnetic poles or something, or what? what's going on there? Or just maybe how I cold think it is. I'm assuming probably mm-hmm. atmospheric oh, no. entry. I can yeah. see that, yeah. It's just colder there, yeah. Is the atmosphere a lot? It's a lot thinner, isn't it? the Antarctica. I, th- I think so, but it yeah. also might not. 
You know, I always think it's like might have something to do with atmospheric entry, you know? Yeah, it's just not as warm. <clears throat> I don't know the science behind that. It's interesting. Yeah. I would also Pretty like cool. to know. I'm the one that brought it up. <laughs> but. <laughs> dude, I got another one. Yo, dude, check this out. Um, going from one thing that sucks from Connor's end about what Sony's doing to another thing that's cool. <clears throat> the director of the new Planet of the Apes movie, he's adding a new, another version of the movie to the Blu-ray special features where he's taken all of the CGI off of the people and the whole movie's going to show the actors in their green screen blue suits or whatever with the dots all over their bodies. Movies need to start doing that. Yeah, yeah he's doing it because he's like, you know, people want to see that kind of stuff just to see it. Yeah. He's like, screw it. I'm doing it. I'm going to add a version in there. And yeah. And the cool thing is this guy that did this new Planet of the Ace movie, the reviews are coming out and it's saying that it's really, really good. But he is the one responsible for the new Legend of Zelda movie. Mm. And he did uh, the Maze Runner trilogy, which, say what you will about him, that first movie is dope. Really good first mm -hmm. movie. Yeah, the yeah. second one is pretty good as well, but that third movie... Lost me. Yeah, it lost me. But uh, The third one felt like too much interference mm -hmm. from studios. Yeah, but his name is uh, Wes Ball. But, uh, yeah, I think it's just a cool feature. Like, something... Just throw extra stuff in there, man. People pay for those, like, special edition stuff for a reason. They want to see the cool behind-the-scenes stuff, you know? The thing mm -hmm. is, if I buy a movie... It's because it's not just because I like the movie, you know. I want to be able to get all the special features that comes with it. And anytime I buy a movie and it doesn't have that stuff, I feel you like feel I just cheated. got slapped in the yeah. I mean, I paid. I don't know. There's probably people out there who are like, dude, you paid for the movie. I'm like, no, nah, man. I'm paying for the special features is what I'm really wanting. Mm -hmm. Deleted scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me a nice long blooper reel because they're there. We know that they are. Mm -hmm. Just let us see them. Another, a fantastic idea that fucking Disney should be doing with Marvel is that anytime a new movie comes out, they need to release another like audio track that goes with the movie that is theater reaction, where it's like, okay, we went and recorded that seven cool. days, or we went and we like we went to Sorry. like six different cities and we recorded the first night that we showed this, and this is the night everyone's so fucking stoked to see it. Because the, there's nothing like being in the theater when Captain America catches that hammer. Mm. Dude, I wish... Just the reaction that... Oh, I everybody. wish our theater would have fucking popped, dude. There's like... You could hear a few people go, oh, but I've seen videos of people like reacting to that like fucking U2 just came out or something like that, you know? It's fucking... U U2, huh? I, I picked... I just picked <laughs> <right now. laughs> Like ta like Taylor Swift came out and there, was like, yeah. okay, there, yeah. yeah. Like you two. Now I get it, yeah. <laughs> like, like the Chiefs just scored a touchdown in Arrowhead. Stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know. That, I, that is 100%, like, could be capitalized. A fucking moment of just everyone going, Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. We need to start selling moments like that. Fuck yeah, we need to sell moments <laughs> like that. That could be our thing. Hey, we're gonna sell you. We got something to sell you. <laughs> That's. I mean, Red <laughs> Bull has <laughs> already. Red Bull has already done that. So. <clears throat> One of us just needs to get like an Iron Man armor, get suited up, and all of a sudden, people will be like, "Yes, the Iron Man." <laughs> He's back. He's alive. <laughs> Off the sidewalk, slut. <laughs> he's, he's, on the, he's on the podcast. <laughs> we got Iron Man back from the dead, everybody. Did I, did I fuck up these lights? No, I did. Okay. I was getting the buzzing sound again. All right. Well, that's been 136 episodes of the podcast. 136. Matt, thanks for being here this week, dude. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It's so glad to have you here on the the last episode ever of Crash with Friends, mm -hmm. the final episode. Mm -hmm. oh. It's been real. We're not doing it anymore. Yep, I'm gonna throw away all these lights and all these cameras and all, everything. I'm gonna throw it away tonight. Did they just demolish not this room, I pee man. On it. Just you, demolish the memory. We agreed. I get to pee on everything. Yeah, we're first. all just gonna pee on it and we're gonna take <laughs> pictures of it. Just get some slight chambers. I've been looking forward to the pee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could just fill this whole place in with cement. Yeah. It's just square footage, and I don't need it. No. 
Mm. No. It's, it's more valuable with cement in it. It's, <laughs> yeah. like, it's true. Yeah, it's people love cement. just big blocks of cement <laughs> below, below ground level. Just think, <laughs> just think, man, that floor will be a lot more sturdy. It will. <laughs> yeah, ain't nobody falling through that. Move <laughs> <laughs> cement underneath. <laughs> you can have them big old ladies over like you want. <laughs> <laughs> Cement hard. Finally, somewhere where Connor can bring his BBWs. Oh, yeah. That he meets on Tinder. And they um, take a pound in. <laughs> <laughs> Just know you can always call me, Connor. Yeah. And I can bring bears over for ladies to choose, I guess. Yes. Yep. yep. <laughs> Gotta give them that that's choice. The new f- Apparently, that's the new fad. <laughs> it's just that. like, I'd rather be in the woods with a bear. That's what I keep seeing online. Is everyone's just like, if it comes between a man and a bear, give me the bear. And I'm just like, okay. I'll be your bear, baby. To be fair, <laughs> I'd choose a bear, too. You'd choose a bear over a man? They're just, they just seem a little bit more cuddly. Like, Oh, yeah, they always look at yeah, They bit, always look yeah. at like, I'd, I'd want a baby bear to raise, you know. Yeah, I want to, like, I, I would pick a bear come only, mainly because I just want to find a nest of cubs to raise. Right, I would kidnap those cubs. Mm-hmm. And eventually, you snatch them. <laughs> yeah, I snatch those cubs <laughs> and I resell them. That's so choosy, man. So, yeah, yeah. walk up and like snatch. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sell you to a choosy family. <laughs> eventually, you try to raise it as your own kid, and it, it gets to a certain age, and then it goes no. <laughs> And then you're like, whoa, Boy. these bears can talk. That's a, that's a Planet of the Apes reference for you people out there. Mm-hmm. And thanks for watching. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Peace. Bye. Crashing with friends. Bye.